In this video, we will consider an application of linear systems. So here's the problem. We want to find all parabolas, so quadratic equation, passing through the points negative 1, 3, 1, negative 1, and 2, 1. So first, let's try and visualize what the question is asking for. Look at the Cartesian plane. And we're given three points. The first point, negative 1, 3. The second point, 1, negative 1. And the third point, 2, positive 1. So we have these three points, and we're looking for finding all parabolas passing through the points. So we can draw one of them that may look something like this. There may be others, we don't know, but we'll find out as we go along. So what are the points? Let's write them explicitly. This one was the point x equals 1, y equals negative 1. This point was the point x equals 2, y equals 1. And this one was the point x equals negative 1, y equals positive 3. Okay, well, if we want to find the parabolas, we have to find the equations. Well, if you remember, a parabola is simply a quadratic polynomial. So it must be of the form some multiple of x squared plus some multiple of x plus some constant term. So y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Now if you think of it, we can, from the knowledge that our parabola contains these three points, construct equations. A point is on the parabola if and only if it is a solution to the equation of the parabola. So the point negative 1, 3 must be a solution of this equation, so we can replace. Let's replace x by negative 1, and I'll write this first. So we'll have a times negative 1 squared, which is 1. I can uh, write it here, so negative 1, 3. This point implies that we get the following equation. As I said, I will write this part first, then equals the y value. And it'll be clear y in a second. So we have a times negative 1 squared, which is 8, plus b times negative 1, so minus b, plus c, that equals y, and for this point, y is positive 3. So you see that the fact that this point is on the equation of our parabola means that the coefficients must satisfy this linear equation. But it's not the only one. This point also must satisfy the equation of our parabola, so we can make a similar substitution. Sorry, positive 1, negative 1. So we replace x by positive 1, and we'll simply get a plus b plus c equals y, which in this case is negative 1. And finally, third point, third equation, positive 2, positive 1. If you replace x by 2, then you get 4a, 4a plus 2b plus c. which equals y, which in this case is positive 1. And so you see, asking for all parabolas passing through these three points is the same as asking to find the variables a, b, c, the coefficients, which is the same as asking to solve this linear system. Now we're good to go. We of course construct the augmented matrix and row reduce. We'll keep the order the same, as we already have a leading one here for A. So we have A, B, C, R, our variables. First row, 1, negative 1, 1, 3. Second row, 1, 1, 1, negative 1. Third row, 4, 2, 1, 1. As we have just said, we already have our leading one in the leftmost column and top row. So we'll kill the entries below. Row 2 minus row 1, row 3 minus 4, row 1. As always, if we copy the rows that we are not changing, 
this is only the first one. One minus one is zero. One minus negative one is two. One minus one is zero. One minus three, negative four. Four minus four is zero. Two minus four times negative one is plus four is six. One minus four, negative three. One minus four times three minus twelve, negative eleven. Well, we can easily get our second leading one by multiplying row two by one half. And this is great because of the four here, we will not have any fraction. So one half of row two. We can now kill the entry below it by doing row 3 minus 6 row 2. We can recopy our first two rows. Negative 3 minus 0, negative 3. Negative 11, negative 6 times negative 2 is positive 12, which gives us positive 1. We can obtain our third leading 1 by multiplying row 3 by negative 1 third. I'll rewrite it here. Let us remind ourselves that the variables were a, b, c. And now if you notice, we have three variables. Each one possesses a leading one, therefore each variable is leading, which implies that we have a unique solution. So at this point, we now use backward substitution. We start from the bottom row, which says that c equals negative one-third. B equals negative 2. And to solve for a, this would be a little more interesting, a equals ne by positive 3. There's a negative b on this side. On the other side, because we want to isolate for a, we'll get a positive b. There's a positive c on the left, send it on the right, and we get negative c. But we know what b and c are b is negative 2, minus c, as c is negative 1 third, this is a positive 1 third, 3 minus 2 is 1, 1 plus 1 third is 4 thirds. And so we now have our unique solution. a equals 4 thirds, b equals negative 2, c equals negative 1 third, but now we have to go back and answer the actual question, which was finding all parabolas passing through the given three points. Well, there is a unique one, so we can replace and give our final answer. And the unique parabola will be y equals a, which was 4 thirds, plus bx, but b was negative 2, plus c, which was negative 1 third. And there you have it. This is the equation of the unique parabola that passes through these three points. If we had removed one point, either one of these three, we would have found out an infinite number of solutions, therefore an infinite number of parabolas. And that's it.